Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we're in After Effects and we're going to be creating a slider animation. So I'm going to take you guys through step by step of how to create this user interaction. So let's go ahead and get started with today's video. All right, so getting started, here's my composition settings. I'm just doing a dribble post size, so 800 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall. I'm at a frame rate of 30 and my duration is 10 seconds and the background color is just plain white. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create my bar. So I'm gonna use the pen tool and I'm just gonna click on the screen and hold shift. And now we have a line. I'm gonna set the stroke on this to, let's try 10 pixels and see how big that is. And then let's make this a darkish blue gray. Actually, let's go quite a bit lighter. Somewhere around there. Okay. I'm going to rename this layer gray underscore bar. I'm going to expand this and go into the contents, shape, and then the stroke. Right here where it says line cap, I'm going to change that from butt cap to round cap. It's going to give us a nice round on each edge. Now that we have this, I'm going to select a layer and hit command D. I'm rename this one blue underscore bar and this is the one we're going to be adjusting so i'm going to first change the stroke and i'm going to change this to a nice blue color so now i have this on our blue bar i'm going to expand it go to this add button and select trim paths so i'm going to expand trim paths and here you'll see at the end it says 100 percent, and the start it says zero percent so if I drag this, you'll see that the path is now trimmed to whatever percentage this is. So if I set this to zero, we can no longer see the bar. And if I set this to 100, it's completely filled. So that's how we're gonna do our bar. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab the text tool and I'm just gonna click once on the screen. And then I'm gonna grab my selection tool. We'll edit the text itself in just a minute. Next, what I'm gonna do is go up to layer and then select new, null object. And you don't have to, but I'm just going to turn off the eyeball so it's no longer visible. I'm going to go to my effects and presets and type in slider. And you'll see slider control. And I'm going to drag that to my new null layer. You can see it up here, but I'm going to expand it down here in the bottom. So under effects, expand slider control. And here we have our slider. So we need to do two things. First is on the blue bar, we need to attach the end value so where it is completed to this slider control. And we also need to tie in the number value to the slider control. So first let's do the blue bar. So I'm going to hold option, that is alt on PC, on the end stopwatch and click. You'll see we have our little pick whip. I'm gonna drag that up to the slider. And now you'll see we have this expression so now we can adjust the slider and you'll see that our bar automatically changes. Now the reason we created the null object is so now we can go into the empty text layer, expand text, hit option or alt on PC on the stopwatch for source text, drag the pick whip to the slider. And now if we adjust the slider, the number increases and decreases with the bar. Obviously you can go past zero to 100, but when you get to 100, that will be 100% of the bar width. So it won't really do anything past here, but the number still goes up. So take that in mind when you're animating. I'll just leave it at 29 for now. And mine is not showing it, uh, but you might have 29 point, let me just input the value, 29.5. You'll see we don't want that. So how we can get around that is down here on your empty text layer. You can double click on the expression. At the beginning, you want to type in math with a capital N dot round, and then do a parentheses. And at the end, you need to close the parentheses. So that way you'll see it rounds up. So if you ever have a number that is not a whole number, it will round it for you. Now I'm going to select my text and go to the character properties. And I have mine at circular, book, 
30 font, all that looks good. I'm gonna select paragraph and I'm gonna align this to the left. And I'll just drag my number down into position. About there it looks okay. If you want this to say anything, you can add text in front of it. Like if this was for changing somebody's age, you can just add age here and then put the number beside it. But for now, I'm just gonna leave this one alone. I'm gonna close all these drop downs for now. So now what we need to do is create the circle that we're gonna be dragging to adjust the bar. So I'm gonna grab my lips tool and just drag out a decent sized circle. That looks okay. I'm gonna select the layer and press Y and that's gonna allow me to drag this to the center of the circle. So the center point is actually center. I'm gonna zoom in a bit and I'm gonna drag this to the front of the bar. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard and that's gonna bring up the opacity. I'm gonna drop this down to 60 so I can see through it. And I'm just going to visually align this to around there. And I'll leave it at 60% for now. So what we want to happen is we want this and the end of this line to match up as we drag. So I'm gonna expand my null object and in my slider settings, I'm gonna set this to zero. At one second, I'm gonna set a keyframe on the slider and I'm also going to set a keyframe under transform position on my shape layer. Let's actually go ahead and rename this to just circle. So now if I go ahead one second, I'll adjust my slider control first. We'll go to, let's go to 70. I'll just drag my circle over. I'm holding shift so that I can't move this up and down. And we'll position it right there. So now if we pan through this, you'll see that they stay the same. And then at three seconds, we'll drag back just a little bit. So I'll adjust my slider to 29. And then I'll just click and drag this over. And then we can turn the opacity back up on this since we no longer need to see through it. So if I zoom out, go to preview and select play, you'll see that we have this. It's kind of jumpy, so we need to add some easing. So to do so, I'm just going to select all the keyframes down for the null object. And then above that, I'm going to hold shift and select the keyframes for our circle. And right here, I'm gonna click this. This is the graph editor. And you'll see that we have all these points. I'm just gonna drag and highlight every one of them and select this one right here, which is easy ease. I'm gonna drag this handle all the way over. If I hit play, you'll see the easing taking effect and making this nice and smooth. One final thing we need to do is add the user interaction. So I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool one more time and I'm gonna drag out a slightly larger circle than our slider. I'm gonna select the layer, press Y and drag the center point to the center point of the circle. For this circle, I'm gonna set it to white, just slightly gray, so FC, FC, FC. In stroke, I think I'm actually gonna make this a little bit darker than that. So we'll go with something like right there. And then on the stroke, I'm gonna set this to two pixels. So we're gonna need some shadow on this object and this object, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So effects and presets, and then type in drop shadow. Let's drag that here. And I'm gonna set the distance to zero. Softness, let's try 20. And opacity, I'll try 20 as well. I think that looks pretty good. On this new shape layer, I'm gonna right click and rename this. I'm gonna call this user. Let's grab the opacity, so T on the keyboard, and I'm gonna put this down to 80%. And if I drag this over, it'll snap into place. Make sure you have snapping up here checked. And it'll snap to the center of that circle. I'm gonna copy this drop shadow, Command C, select this circle, and Command V. And you'll see we have drop shadow on that now. And also let's change this to white, just so it looks a little bit better. Put a nice gray border on it, and I'll put that at two. That looks pretty good. 
So now at the beginning of the animation, I'm going to select this drop down and choose circle. So now wherever the circle animates, this circle will follow it. So what we need to do is at one second when the animation begins, we need this to become visible. And then when the animation ends, it needs to become invisible. So I'm going to select user and press T for opacity. I'm going to set a keyframe at 80% opacity at one second. In my preview tab, I'm going to go over five frames, one, two, three, four, five, and set this to zero. Now I'm going to drag over to the end of the animation, which is at three seconds. And I'm going to set another keyframe at 80% opacity and then go over five frames to the right. One, two, three, four, five, and set this to zero. So now if we select play and view the preview, our user interaction becomes visible, drags the slider, and then goes invisible. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed creating this slider in Adobe After Effects. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe for more UI related content, and as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.